Hi, Chase. Good afternoon, Professor. How are you? Uh, I'm doing fine. How about yourself? I'm sorry I didn't get in earlier. I, literally speaking, the time just got away from me this afternoon. Don't worry about it. Rosina, what's with the rockets? Or is that Chase? Chase, do you have the rockets? Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind, Rosina. <laughs> Go back to sleep. No problem. See you later. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to try and simplify it tonight. Okay, Chase, that seemed reasonable to you? Reasonable enough. Okay, good enough. Any questions? Questions about um, anything? I was wondering if you could go over a few of the uh, quiz questions. Happy to. Uh, okay. And we're into quiz seven. Yes, sir. Ooh. <laughs> okay. I have to do that sometime this weekend. So I have to bring my so I have to bring my thing. You don't mind, Chase, if I show this in front of others. Go ahead. What are you, what are you talking about? You got an eight out of ten. What are you worried about? The two questions I missed. <laughs> Okay, I understand. There are those perfectionists that have to know everything right. Why is this not doing this? Come on. There we go. I take it, it is, okay. All right. Did you look up phosphate, Chase? I couldn't find the uh, the PowerPoint that you used. I had the uh, answer keys almost. Like okay. Do you have the Do you have the survivor guide? I do not. Uh, Chase, that's. I mean, it, it's not that expensive. It's like twenty five bucks. Uh, well, I bought the textbook. <laughs> All right. Do you have the You have the textbook. I don't have it open. I can. Okay, that's this one, right? Right? Uh, Something yeah. that looks like this? Yeah, Mastering Chemistry. Okay. Now you're going to make me find the silly thing in the textbook. Okay. Naming. Okay, 144. Try 144-ish. I'm still trying to open it right now. All right. I was looking for the book. And I am going to be awfully upset if he doesn't have a. Uh, You are not going to tell me he doesn't have a. What? He have a list of polyatomics? In the book? Yeah. But didn't you have them on your. Uh... I did. I had them on my. On the. I had them on the PowerPoint. Yeah. But. Where could I find that? Uh, that was in, that was in the PowerPoint that uh, uh, is balancing chemical equations. Mila, is this your Princess Leia look? Yeah, I always do a bun, but my hair is so long, so it's like gets too top heavy, so I just try to space them out a bit. <laughs> Are you saying you're spacey? Yes. Oh, yeah. I got long hair, but I always want it up. I don't know why. She just That's cut it off. Yeah, you got your hair. You need a haircut. I need a haircut. Yeah, you need a haircut. Uh, Mila, thank you. Thank you, Mila. Sorry. <laughs> no. Asha. <laughs> Okay. 
I'm trying to find it for you, Chase. Professor, and, you, yes. I know you post the uh, recordings of the class, correct? Yeah. Like, do you post like the PowerPoint that you've done? Yeah. Because I can't find, I'm in day 11 chemical reactions. And it just says there's only outline for chemical reactions. And then the. All right, let me, let me get, all right. All right. You've asked me like three different questions, Chase. Okay. Let's go get them one at a time. Okay. Okay. Phosphate is PO4. It has a minus three charge. Okay. So if phosphate has a minus three charge and sodium has a plus one, how many sodiums do you need? Three. All right, you, you got answer two. Okay. All right, you have barium and nitrogen. This one you could have done with a periodic table. What's the charge on barium? Um, ah, there it is. Yay. Is barium plus two? Plus two. Now nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen would be minus three. Okay. So you could do it one of two ways. What's the least common multiple of two and three? Uh, six. So if barium's a plus two, how many barium's do you need to get to six? You need three. All right. So if nitrogen's a three, minus three, how many nitrogens do you need to get to minus six? Two. So that explains why it's three bariums and two nitrogens. Okay. I just okay. got those mixed up. No, no problem. Uh, your, your second thing you needed, the polyatomics, that is on page 143 of the text, 5.5. 5.5 of the Tro book. Okay? All right. Thank you. And answer to your question, the other question. Sorry, Chase is monopolizing me, guys. And I'm also sorry I kind of let time get away and I didn't get here early enough. I need back. I need course content. Okay, I'm going to be in test two. Okay, Chase? Okay, do you see this, Chase? Mm -hmm. I'm in test two. I'm in naming test two. Day nine, naming chemicals. Below naming chemicals, I get the outline, the PowerPoint, and the extra homework. Click on the PowerPoint. And I've got two in there, balancing chemicals and nomenclature. Okay? Oh. And the, I got to see this. And the, okay, the pie. It's in here somewhere, I promise you. There they are. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Not that I'm getting rid of you, Chase, but anybody else have any questions? <laughs> How much was the course seven worth? Because I completely forgot we had it until right now. I'm sorry, Mar Mariah? Yeah. You're asking me what? How much was quiz seven worth? Because I didn't remember we had it until now. And 10 points late. and you get to drop two. Okay. I have a question. Yes, I have an answer, Hunter. Can we go over, um, no, can, when, when is quiz eight due? <laughs> uh, next Tuesday. I got to make it up though. And that's going to be on the 15th, right? Uh, what's next Tuesday? 15th? No. no it's 16th. 16th. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then also, um, if there's any other impending due dates besides that, um, All right. I know Hunter. we have a lab. Hunter. Yeah. Go, go to course content. Okay. Course schedule. Okay. If, you're, if you want to go for, why is that? Oh, that's that thing. Different. The, the, set, the second one down. 
The first one just gives you what's due. Okay. Okay. Do the second so, one down and click on it. So on course schedule, I only see one link. It's the schedule SBC 1025. Schedule SPC 1025 spring 2021. Yeah. All right. You, you open that. Okay. And if you, I, I've got it open right now. Can you see it? Uh, let me go back to you. I, I'm on my courses. Yes. All right. Everything is in there. Okay. Okay. As a matter of fact, quiz eight is not due. Quiz A does not do until the 18th. Okay, so not the 16th, it'll be the 18th. Correct, I'm sorry, I was wrong about that. Okay. All right. So I will, again, again, I, I send the announcements out on Sundays. Okay. That may be a bit different this week because I'm going to South Florida. What are you doing there? Uh, harassing my grandchildren. I'm going to South Florida too. You're going to South Florida. I'm. I. You have my sympathy. I hate yeah. South Florida. Hey, 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 hey! That's my hometown. Sorry. Have to, uh, wrestle some alligator. I, I'm. I'm very, what very happy for you. What part are you going to? What party am I going to? What no, part? What part? What uh, part is that? Do you know where Lighthouse Point is? Lighthouse what? Lighthouse Point, halfway between Boca and Fort Lauderdale. Oh, gotcha. I'm from uh, Miramar, just south of Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, I know. I know exactly where that's at. I went May. to school at FGCU. I was around that area. That's around Miramar is around where my uh, daughter teaches. She teaches at Nova High School. I know where that is. Yeah, it's right around there, right around Broward, the Broward Mall. Anyway, guys, we got to get started because we didn't get as far as we I wanted to, to the other day. Anybody have anything pressing they need to talk about? Anything pressing, guys? Okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and make and simplify this, okay? Try and simplify it. Or where is that? Okay. I just realized my audio is still. All right, so I believe, ladies and gentlemen, I got through the cations last time and we, we stopped, right? Is that correct? I got through the cations last time. Is that correct? I need answers. Yes, yes. Thank you yes. very much. All right, just to review, if you're looking at the chemical formula, if the first element is a metal, you use ionic rules which are everything I've been talking about so far, okay? So you ask yourself a second question. Is that metal a type one or a type two? If it is a type one, type ones are defined by, they each have one charge and one charge only. So if it's in the first column, if it's the alkaline metals, they're all alkaline metals in the first column are all plus one. Alkaline earth in the second one over are all a plus two. Then there were four special ones I gave you. Silver, zinc, aluminum, and cadmium. Silver's a plus one always. Zinc a plus two always. Aluminum a plus three always. And cadmium a plus two. If it's something other than a type one cation, you need to write the element down and close the charge in parentheses and then go on and write the anion, okay? Now, if we're dealing with anions, okay? If I have a monoatomic anion, a monoatomic anion is an anion that is composed of one type of element. So if I have NaCl, the anion is Cl. If I have PbO2, lead, lead two oxygens. Again, even though there are two oxygens, it's only one type of element. 
So that defines what a monoatomic anion is. To name them, take the first syllable of the element, drop everything else, add IDE. So if I have oxygen, oxide, fluorine, fluoride, sulfur, sulfide. All right, we good with that? Are we good with that one? Yes. Yes. Okay, now, if I have a polyatomic, polyatomics, in a way they're easy and in a way they're hard. They're easy because to name them, you just name what the polyatomic is. They're hard because you basically got to memorize them. Okay? So what you're going to want to do, Chase, Chase, what you're going to want to do? Yes, sir. All of those polyatomics that I mentioned in the, uh, in the balancing compounds, you might want to write them on a sheet of paper and make sure you bring that to the next test. The yep. one I was looking for? Yes, okay. that's in the balancing compounds. The balancing compounds uh, PowerPoint, it's within there, you will find it. Take all of those polyatomics, write them down, make sure you write the formula, what they're called, and the charge. All right. All right, so anybody confused about how we're going to name, how we're going to name the compounds. Anybody confused about that? All right, so we're going to ask the questions. First question is the first element a metal? If yes, use ionic rules. If no, use covalent rules. And we'll get to those later tonight. Okay? Second question. Is the metal type one or type two? If type one, just name the element. If type two, you need to name the element. Determine the charge. Put the charge as a Roman numeral in parentheses after the name. Done with half of it. You're done with half the name. Third question. Is the anion composed of more than one type of element? If yes, it's monoatomic. If yes, it's monoatomic. First syllable. Add IDE. If no, it's a polyatomic. Just name the polyatomic. Okay, those are the rules we're living by. Those are the questions. So we're going to go and we are going to do some. We are going to do some naming. Okay, Hunter, 
Professor, would you mind uh, expanding or enlarging your PowerPoint? I can't. It's more visible. Thank you. I can't. I can't. Rosina, the reason I can't is I can't type. If I expand it into the slideshow, I can't type. Let's try this though. Can you see that? All right. Hunter, CAO. First element. Yeah, oxide. First, first element. Is it a metal? Calcium is. None. Okay. Guys, I want you to put out, bring out your periodic table and either 143 of this text or. Yeah, it's alkaline earth. Okay, it's a metal. One second. Or guys, module five of the survivor guide. I got it at page seven. It looks something like this, okay? I need you to have that stuff out because you got to be quick and answering these questions if we're going to get more examples. Okay, Hunter, Cal the calcium. Calcium was a metal, correct? Yes. We use ionic rules or do we use covalent rules? Ionic. Ionic rules. Okay. So, second question. Is calcium a type one or a type two? I have it open right here. I believe that it is, what is that? Is that your phone? That's my wife. That's oh, my wife. I believe it's a type one. It's in the second column. It's a type one. Do type ones need a Roman numeral? Yes. What's your second guess? No. No. Type ones, you know the charge, Hunter. If you know the charge, you don't have to designate it. All calciums are going to be a plus two You're charge. You're right. Yep. Thank you, for, plus two. Okay. thank you for agreeing that I'm absolutely right. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. So we got calcium. We're done. We're done with the cation. Let's look at the anion. Is the anion composed of more than one type of element? Hunter, look at it. What's the, what is the entire anion of CAO? Um, okay. It, it is. Here's a clue, guys. Here's a clue. All right. If you have a metal, if you have a metal, the metal is going to be your cation. Everything else in the compound will be the anion. So what's the entire anion in CAO, Hunter? So I know calcium is a metal. Again, uh, Hunter, everything to the right of the calcium is your anion. What is your anion? Oxygen. That's it, right? Is oxygen more than one type of element? No. So it's a, it's a one type of element. It's monoatomic. So it's be two, right? What? Yeah. But yes, Hunter, you're right. Okay. But keep on, keep with me right here. Okay. Cause I'm trying to, trying to make a point here. Okay. All right. So oxygen, one type of element, it's monoatomic. Remember I said monoatomics take the first syllable, get rid of the rest. Add IDE. So oxygen is going to become O I V. Oxygen. What's the first syllable for oxygen? O. No. Ox. Or oxy. Or ox. Ox. Yeah. Okay. Ox. Add the add the IDE. Oxide. Calcium. Oxide. Calcium oxide yeah. All right. We good. Okay, let's see who else is out there. Who's Vixwe? Who is V-I-K-S-W? Sorry, I'm on my other computer. It's me, Victoria. Hi, Victoria. Hi. All right, so we're going to go for another compound. All right, you up to okay. this? I hope so. Uh, let's see what I want to do. Okay. I actually look at a blasted periodic table first. Forgot what these things are. Okay.
Okay, you see that, Victoria? Is that SR? SR. Uh, SR I2. I gotta find SR. Hold on. Look in the second column. Strontium? Is it a metal? Uh, it's in the second column, so yes. Is it a type one or a type two metal? Uh, type one? You know what the charge is. It's in the second column. Has to be a plus two charge. So it is a type one. Do I need a Roman numeral, Victoria? No. No. So name the cation. Um, you had it before. Strontium. Strontium. Okay. Going on to the anion. Is there more than one type of element that makes up the anion? There's, there's a subscript of two, but, but it's it's only one. It's it's, it's by only itself. one type. It's yeah. only one type. There there are two iodines, but it's only iodine, right? <coughs> right. So, if it's only one type, it's monoatomic. Mm -hmm. And the way we name monoatomics, first syllable, iodine, take it all the way to the D. Uh, I, is, uh, is iode, iode? Iode, iode, perfect, yeah, absolutely. Iode. Add the ID, add the IDE. Iode, add the IDE after that. Professor, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not all with it right now. So okay. help me a little bit here. No, I, I am helping you. You were, you were right when you said iode, IOD. All I'm asking you to do right now, Victoria, is add the IDE to iode, ID. You have IOD. Okay, Victoria? Yeah. Just basically now, what he's asking you to say, you know. Add, uh, add IDE after the IOD. And then pronounce it. I can't I can't focus right now. I'm really sorry. No problem. No problem. Who's who's this talking can, with this, me? This confused me in the homework because I know there's iodine. Hunter, I know there's Hunter. Bear with me a second, okay, please? Bear with me. I gotta get this. I gotta get through this. All right. I will ask after we get done with this, then we'll go on to questions. Okay? Is it iodide? Iodide. First syllable for iodine is iode. Add the ide. Now, Hunter, please. Hunter. No, I was just gonna say. I mean, I iodide. It, it's it was confusing because I kept getting iodine, iodine, iodide. And then, you know what I mean? Mixed you gotta up. Do, you got to do it this way. You got to take the first syllable of the monoatomic element, truncate everything else, add IDE. Okay, Curtis, you ready for one? Yes, sir. I hope so. Okay, K is looking at my Curtis, table. Is it a metal, Curtis? Um, let me find it. Yes, sir, it's potassium. Metal, it is a metal. Are we gonna use ionic? Are we using ionic or covalent rules? It's in the first row, so the first column. So is that gonna be type two? That's covalent? No, 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 I'm not asking type one or type two yet, Curtis. Keep okay. with me. Keep, just organize the question. First question okay. was, was it a metal? You answered yes. That meant yes, we're sir. using ionic rules. Yes, Second sir. question I ask you now is, is it a type one or type two? It is a type two. Is it in the first column, Curtis? Yes, sir. If it's in the first column, don't all the ones in the first column have a plus one charge? Yes, they do. Okay, so. So that's type one. That is a type one. So Curtis, does it need a Roman numeral? No, it does not. Does not need a Roman numeral. So the cation, name, name what the metal is. Potassium. Potassium. Okay, now we're going to go for the second half. All right. Okay. Everything, everything to the right of the potassium is the anion. So Curtis, does this, 
pain, more than one type of element? No, just one. Uh, well, no, it might be. Yes, yeah, hydrogen and oxygen. So two. hydrogen and oxygen is two different yeah. types. So it's a polyatomic. Now, do you have your survivor guide with you? I do not. I just have my periodic table here. Okay. Do you have? Do you have a book? I don't know. Okay. I have my survival guide, but it's on my computer, which I'm, you know, okay. I'm doing the Sorry. Yeah. Somebody tell him. Somebody look on page seven of the survival guide. Hydroxide. What's hydroxide. That? hydroxide. So the polyatomic is called hydroxide, Curtis. Okay. You got the, what, right, name the cation. Cation is oxygen and no, hydrogen. No, no, no. The cation. The metal. Cation is potassium. Potassium. And the they anion just, is, is oxygen and hydrogen. No, nope. it's what they told you it was. Oh, hydroxide. hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide. Okay. Potassium hydroxide. Okay. Damn it. There we go. Okay, Mariah. Yeah. All right, we're gonna look at this. First element, is it a metal? Yes. Guys, everyone that's out there, answer the questions as I'm asking. It's a metal. Mariah, do I use ionic or covalent rules? Ionic. Okay, great. Now we're gonna look at silver. Is silver a type one or a type two metal? Is it a type one because it has a one plus charge usually? Not usually, always. Always. All right, it's one of the four special ones. Remember I said silver, zinc, aluminum, and cadmium? It's yeah. one of the four special ones you have to memorize. So yes, it is a type one. Do I need a Roman numeral, Mariah? No. So what's, what's the name of the cation? Silver. Okay. Do you have your polyatomic chart with you? It's sulfate. Okay. SO4 is the name of SO4. It's a polyatomic because there are two different types of elements, sulfur and oxygen, that make it up. So you just look it up in a chart. SO4 is sulfate. This is called silver, silver sulfate. sulfate. Okay. Now, we're going to go to another one. Oh, that's why. Okay, let me see who else is out there. Apple Grace. Apple Grace? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Do you see do you see the compound that's on the screen? Yeah. All right. Is the first element a metal? Uh yeah. Do I use ionic or covalent rules? Uh co covalent. Covalent. Yeah. If it's a metal, somebody help her. Oh, no, no, the other one, the ionic. Yeah. Ionic. Yeah. Okay. Now, is cobalt a type one or a type two metal? Type two. Type two. Okay. What do type two metals need? Uh, I don't know. Call out somebody. Roman numeral. Okay, you got that, Apple Grace? Yeah. All right. Now, we got to figure out what the charge is on cobalt. Okay. okay. We can do the cross thing. So if we do the cross thing, what is the charge on the cobalt? Two. 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 So we're going to name the cation. Come on, Apple Grace. 
What's the name of the element? The cobalt. Cobalt. Yeah. Now put in parentheses what? I'm sorry, I don't know what. Well, I, mean, I don't know. It's a perfectly good excuse. Mm -hmm. Perfectly good answer. Jennifer. Roman numeral. Yep, Roman numeral two. Okay, so Apple Grace, we have yeah. cobalt, the name of it. You said it's a type two. Type twos need a Roman numeral, parentheses two. Yeah. Okay, you want to give a shot at the anion, Apple Grace? No, I'm sorry. Okay. No question. Can you go over like why cobalt is a type two and not type one? Because Hayden, is it in the first column? No. Is it in the second column? No. Is it silver, zinc, aluminum, or cadmium? No. If it's none of those, it's a type two. Okay. If it's a type two, it needs to have a Roman numeral. Okay? okay. Now, Hayden, did you arrive? Did you arrive after I told you how to name anions? Yeah, I came in late, sorry. Okay, that's fine. Jennifer, you out there? Yes. Is the anion composed of more than one element? No, just one type of element. So it's a monoatomic. Mm -hmm. How do we name monoatomics? First syllable plus I-D-E. Do it. Bromide. Cobalt to bromide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh-oh, who am I going to get to name this monster? Let's see who's out there. Alec. Yes, sir. Okay. First element, is it a metal? Yes. First element is a metal. Therefore, we're going to use which rules? Um, the ion. Ionic rules. Okay. Yeah, ionic. All right, is it a type one or type two metal? Uh, type two, I think. Not in, it's not in column one, not in column two. It's not silver, zinc, aluminum, or cadmium. So yes, it is a type two. What do type twos need, Alec? The Roman numeral. Roman numeral. How do we figure out what the Roman numeral is gonna be? See, that's the one thing I'm not too sure about. Just the Roman numeral though. Okay, that's fine, Alec. All right, the Roman numeral, iron, iron yep. can be, iron can, iron sulfate can be that compound or it can be this one. Uh, nope. Okay. Okay. If I have a compound that's made of iron and sulfate, it can be either one of them. I have to be able to distinguish between the top one and the bottom one. Okay? All right. All right. The way I do that is with the charge on the iron. So the Roman numeral is directly correlative to the charge. It is. Yeah. It's not directly correlated. It is the charge. Oh, okay. Whatever so... the charge is, is going to be what, what you put in the Roman numeral. So we're going to deal with the top one. What's the charge on that iron? Um, is it eight? No. Six. Three. No. Who said three? Marie. Who's... Marie. Good for you, Marie. Thank you. Remember, guys, you can do the cross thing, and you're going to be right 90% of the time. So if the subscript on the anion is 3, that means that the charge on the cation is going to be a plus 3. 
You got that, Alec? Alec? Yeah, sorry. My chat box opened up. So when I hit space bar, I just kept typing in there for yeah. a second. No problem. So did you understand what I just said, Alec? Yeah, so you multiply the charge of the uh, anion, which is three, by the uh, cation to get three. Okay, so if it if the charge on the cation is a plus three iron, name it. Iron three. Iron three. Now, SO4, do you have your polyatomics with you? I do. It is uh, sulfate. Iron three sulfate. The next one is another one of those that you can't do the cross thing for. Okay? FeSO4, you can't do the cross thing. Remember, guys, I told you it was good 90, 95% of the time. All right? So let's figure out what that is. Obviously, we know it's iron. Obviously, we know it's a type two. So, Elizabeth. Yeah. Okay. We know the bottom compound, we know it's iron, we know it's a type two. If SO4 is a minus two charge, what's the charge on Fe? It would have to be positive two so that it neutralizes. So name it for me, Elizabeth. Could you repeat what the name of the polyatomic ion was again? Sulfate. So it would be iron two sulfate. Are we good with this? Okay, we've got about a half an hour in here. All right, we've done it forwards. We got to do it backwards now. Uh, yeah. Okay, I give you the name. You give me the formula. Aaron. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Potassium. K. K. Okay. Now, we have something that ends in IDE here. Right, Aaron? Yeah. Sounds kind of like it made a monoatomic, doesn't it? I have no clue what that means. It sounds like we used, in order to end the compound with IDE, it was, it has to be a monoatomic. Do you remember how I told you to name monoatomics? Remember I said first syllable, add IDE? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think the element is if the anion is chloride? Chlorine. Chlorine. Okay, Aaron, what's the charge on potassium? No charge. No, 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 potassium. No, what? Uh, um, I don't know. Which column is it in, Aaron? Um, hold on. In the first column. So the first column, what did we say? What did we say the charges were for the first column? Two. Yep. One. One. It has one valence electrons. It is a plus one, all right? Okay. What about chlorine? Um, chlorine is in the 17th column. How many more electrons can we put in chlorine? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know is a perfectly good answer. Somebody out there. 
What's the charge on chlorine? It's going to be minus negative one. Minus one. Minus one. Minus so one. if I have potassium at a plus one, chlorine at a minus one, is this balanced? They balance. They balance. All right. We're going to go with. Uh, let me do nitrate. All right. What's the symbol for gold? AG. AU. AU. Oh my, I said silver like an idiot. Guys, if you remember correctly, I either gave you gold or I gave you silver on the test. I did that for a reason. You got to distinguish the two of them. Gold. Goldfinger's first name is Arik Goldfinger. If that A helps. AU is gold. All right. Nitrate. Does it end in IDE? No. So no. do we have a monoatomic? No. No. So basically, you got to go to your polyatomic chart, and you got to find out what the formula for nitrate is. NO3. NO3. All right. Now we got to figure out what the charges are. What's the charge on gold? Plus three. Wait, wait, wait. How'd you know that so quick? On the periodic chart? No. Wrong answer. Oh, no, it's the, it's the moment 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 moment. Moment. Seven. Thank you. You are paying attention. Thank you so much. The Roman numeral, guys, when you have a type two, the Roman numeral will always give you the charge of it. So gold is a plus three. Now, look on your chart for NO3. What's the charge on NO3? Negative one or minus one. So how many NO3s do I need? Three. 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 Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't confuse people further. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's good. OK, let's see something else. Mercury one oxide. See who I can bother again. Faith. Faith. Gates yeah. in the house. Okay, Faith. Oh, but I said you said Gates. Never mind. Uh, I'm sorry. Gates, I'll get to you later. You haven't missed your turn. All right, Faith. Okay. We yeah. want to know what the formula is from mercury one oxide. All right. So what is the chemical symbol? For mercury? Yes. Uh, MN? No. Yeah. Uh, Somebody help her. H -G. H -G. H -G. OK. HG, Faith. Mm -hmm. Now, does it end in IDE? Uh, yes. So we're probably dealing with a monoatomic. If we're dealing with a monoatomic, then what would the element be? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? All right, because it ends in IDE, we are probably dealing with a monoatomic, especially yes. because there's a metal that precedes it. All right? All so right. if we're dealing with a monoatomic, Go backwards to how we name monoatomics. Um, we use the syllable of the N. So ox. What do you think ox oxygen. is the element? Oxygen. Guys, you're making this harder than it is. All right, Faith. What's the charge on my mercury? Um, what? Did you hear the cheater, Faith? No. 
What's I'm the just, Roman numeral, Faith? Uh, one. So what do you think the charge is? One. Plus one. What's the charge on oxygen? Negative two. So what do we have to do to balance them? Uh, two mercuries. Two mercuries. That's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful, guys? That yeah. is absolutely wonderful. Uh, Saint sulfate, Leandre. Yes. Okay, zinc sulfate, zinc sulfite. All right. What is my what is the first element in my compound going to be? Zn. Very good. Okay. Is there a Roman numeral? Hey, Andre, it's not a hard question. Is there it, a Roman numeral no. there? I think no. Not. There's no Roman numeral, so it has to be a type one. I'm telling you right now, it's not in column one. It's not in column two. Oh, that's one of the little special ones you're talking about. Leandre, do you know what the special one, what the charge on the special one is? Is it plus two? Plus two, dynamite, okay. All right, do you have your polyatomic chart open? Yes. All right, sulfite. What is the form? Oh, go ahead. SO3. All right, now. You said zinc was a plus two. What's the charge on sulfite? Two minus. Are we good? Yes. Finest kind. Guys, I am not kidding you. You need to have a lot of practice on this. Lots and lots. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a nomenclature lab. It's coming up soon. That will help. But in the meantime, guys, I can't emphasize this enough. You're going to need to practice. Sorry, I'm going down. I'm trying to get to the next thing. All right. All right. Pretend this says no. This should say no. Uh, cut. Okay. It says no, no. You're looking at the first element. All right, is there a metal present? No. Are you using ionic rules? No, covalent. You are not using ionic rules. You are using covalent rules. All right, the next, when you're going to covalent rules, the next question is, does the first element have only one atom? If the answer to that is yes, you just name the element. If the answer to that question is no, you proceed it with the correct prefix and add the name. Now, if you go here, and there is no metal present. And you're looking at the second element. The way you name that, you need a prefix. You need the root just the same way that we did the monoatomic anions. You need the root, the first syllable of that element. Then you need to end it with I-D-E. Molecular compounds. Guys, 
We're talking about two nonmetals bonding together. You always name the first one, the one that's to the left. You always name that one first. If there is a subscript, then you need a prefix. That means there's more than one of them. Then you look to the second element. The pre, you use the prefix, then you use the first syllable of the element name, end it in I-D-E. The prefixes. If there is one of that element, it's mono. But remember, we only use mono for defining the second element. If there's two di, three of that element tri, four tetra, five penta, six hexa, seven hepta, eight octa, nine nona, 10 deca, 11 predicata. You will never have more than 10. If you have more than 10, slap your teacher. All right? You are can not I, can going I to have more than 10. Terry, what were you saying? If I have 11, can I just come slap you? Yeah, I'll enjoy it. <laughs> can we get a visual representation? No. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Okay, so if I have a molecular compound, I look at the first element here, carbon. Is carbon a metal? No. Not no. a metal. So I'm going to use covalent rules. Covalent rules, prefixes. Ionic rules, no prefixes. Ionic rules, Roman numerals. Covalent rules, no Roman numerals. That's basically what we're doing to distinguish one from the other. So I look at CO. First element is a non-metal. I'm using covalent rules. The next thing I do is I ask how many of the first element are there? There's one. My rules say if the first element has only one, you do not use a prefix. So we name the first element carbon. We look to the second one. The second element is oxygen. Okay. How many of them are there? There is one. It's the second element. So we need a prefix. Mono. All right. The second element, we need the body of that element. We need the first syllable. Mono, ox, ended in I-D-E. But we don't, it doesn't sound too, monooxide, it's got too many syllables in it. What you have to do is you just truncate it a little bit. Carbon monoxide. N2O4, again, I ask myself, is the first element a metal? No, no metal. I'm using covalent rules. I'm using prefixes. All right. How many of them are there? Two. I go to my chart. I go to my chart. No, I go to my chart. There they are. I have two. My prefix is die. So for the first element, I put the prefix, just name the element. So for N2O4, I have dye nitrogen. Now I got to go and look at the second element. The second element is oxygen. There are four of them. The prefix for four is tetra. The root for oxygen is ox. And it in I-D-E. So the name for N2O4, 
dinitrogen tetraoxide. All right, come at me. Questions? Do you like this one better than the other one? Um, are you ever going to have like three non-metals or do you just keep going on that same level of nomenclature? Not from me, Terry. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Professor, are... so the rule for uh, monoatomic here is the same as what we did with ionic. Okay, they're not monoatomic, okay? Because monoatomic defines ions. I mean, in fact, four, what you're doing, so... Rosina, what you're yes. doing, you're looking at the first element. First element is a non-metal. So if the first element is a non-metal, you're not using ionic rules. You're using covalent rules. And in covalent rules, it's kind of like we're naming one monoatomic and then the next one. Does that make sense to you, Rosina? Yes. Okay. I uh, forgot where I was. PI3. Why can't this, why is this doing this? PI3, Rosina. Okay. Yes. Is the first element a metal? Non-metal. Non-metal. Am I using covalent or ionic rules? Covalent. Okay. This are we using prefixes? Uh yes. Okay. Now I'm looking at my first element. Is there one of them? Yes. Do I need a prefix? No. Just name the first element. Phosphorus. Phosphorus, okay. I'm gonna to go to the second one. How many of them are there? Three iodine. So what is the prefix for three? Tri. Tri, okay. Now iodine is the symbol, is, is the name for the symbol I, correct? Yes. So, what, so what, that's what, gonna become iodide? Exactly. So you, you phosphorus triiodide. Phosphorus triiodide. Okay. Warning, guys. If there's a metal in the formula, do not use the mono di tri prefixes. Don't use them. Because if there's a metal there, you've got an ionic compound. If you've got an ionic compound, you use those rules. Similarly, if the first element is not a metal, you don't use Roman numerals. Okay. Let me see who's out there. Hayden. Yeah. Okay, you can't use the excuse that you got here late. All right, Hayden, look at the number one compound there, okay? Phosphorus. Is there, okay, phosphorus, right? Is it a metal? Yes. Phosphorus is a metal? Oh, wait, no, never mind, sorry. Wait, okay. so would it be, would it be tetraphosphorus? And then, hold on, and then deca oxygen. Deca, what's the, what's the root of oxygen? Ox, I. Oxide. Tetraphosphorus deca oxide. Okay, what you're doing is in the second element, you're using the first syllable as the root. The prefix is gonna be how many of them there are. Then you use the first syllable of that element ended in I-D-E, okay? Okay, because it's, it's like uh, mono, and only one of them. So it ends in the I. Are you trying to do the second one? No, 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 never mind. 
No, I understand it now. Uh, Terry, you haven't done one of these yet, have you? Um, I have in my head. All right, good. Good for you. You got the second one down there. Is, is S a metal? S is not a metal. S is not a metal. Are we using covalent or ionic? Um, covalent. Covalent. Does that mean we use prefixes, Terry? Mm, yes. Very good. Okay. So, Terry, you're running away. <laughs> I have to turn on the light. Okay, Terry. Look at that first element. How many of them are there? One. So, does it need a prefix? Mono. Is he right? No. Why not? Mono is the prefix for one. But there's only a prefix. We don't need a prefix. We don't need a prefix. Terry, the first element don't need a prefix if it's one. So just name it. What's the element? Terry. Um, it's so sulfur. sulfur. Okay. There's only one of them. Just name it sulfur. Okay. How many of them are there in the second element? Um, six. Do you know what the prefix for six is? Hector. Hexa. 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 Do you know what the element is? Bromine. Come on, Come on Terry. Bromine. Bromine, so use the first syllable and end it in I-D-E. So sulfur hexide? Not, not, not sulfur hexide. You got to put the element bromine in there. Sulfur hexa. Bromine. Sulfur hexa bromide? Exactly. Sulfur hexa bromide. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Where do you get to the iodines? Zena. 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 Okay, I promised to get. I think in the chat. Yeah, she's uh -huh. in the chat. Her mic's not working. Oh, her her mic is not working. Okay, good. Gate. Gate. Oh, well, my mic is is not working either. Just yeah, in yeah, case yeah. I, I hear you. I, I I understand your mic is not working, Gate. <laughs> All right, Gate. Yes, sir. Number three. How many of them are the how, first of all? Is the first element a metal or not? A bit. Dave. Okay. Who thinks Gates doing this on purpose? I do. He got a lag switch. Nah, he unplugging his mic and plugging it back in at the yeah, same time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Spencer. Hey, I'm gonna need y'all to calm down and back me up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, it's Omar. Hello. Omar. Yes. Okay, let's look at the third one. It's the first element of metal. One second. Can I just tap that? Can I tap that on this one? Because you know what? I need some more practice. Can I tap that? Go on for it. Go for Numbers. it. Numbers. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, Hunter, let him go. Okay. Omar, is the first oh. element a metal? Iron. Omar, I'm looking at the third compound here. Is the first element a metal or not? No, it's a say. No, it's not. Do we use ionic or covalent rules? Ionic. What's your second guess? Omar, it's not ionic. No. No. If you have a metal in the first element, it's ionic. Cl is a non-metal. Therefore, you're using covalent rules. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, okay, Omar. How many of 
How many of the first element are there? One. What's the subscript, Elmar? What's the what? The subscript. Elmar, I'm going to catch you later. Hunter, come in. On number three, correct? Number three. The subscript for CL is two. So what's the prefix? Die. What's the element? Uh, CL is uh, chlorine. Dichlorine. Dichlorine, yeah. How many do you have of the second element? Sorry, I can't. Can you move the mouse? Is that say uh, seven? Seven. Yep. So what's the prefix? The prefix for seven is going to be hepta. So I've got dichlorine, hepta. Hepta, sulfur. Sulf. S sulf sulfate. Sulf. Sulfide. Dichlorine. Sorry, I have, I have my, my page seven open. Dichlorine, hepta, and then it's going to be. Uh, you just said it. Sulfate. Sulf, not sulfide. Eight. Sulfide. Yeah, sorry. It's not, a, it's not a polyatomic ion, so you don't have to worry about those names on your page seven. Okay. Thanks, because I'm a jackass. Okay. Who thinks they've got this down? I think, I think Terry. Terry let got me this try. down, for sure. All right, who's, who's just said, let me try? Marie. Marie, okay. Number four. Okay. Name it. Uh, calcium bromine or D, D. Wait, 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 wait. Why isn't it? Why isn't it calcium dibromide? Because it's uh, covalent rules we're using, and then it's a two substance. All right, all right. I'll agree with you. You were right when you first said calcium bromide. Okay. That is the correct answer. My next question is, why isn't it calcium dibromide? Can, can because it's a, non, it's a non-metal. Wait, it's whoa, a... whoa, whoa. Where's <laughs> calcium in the periodic table, Marie? Yes. Oh, ca yes. Calcium, it's a metal. Calcium's a metal. When we have a metal, we do not use the prefixes. Yes. So yes. you were right to begin with. It's a type one metal. It's calcium bromide. Okay. All right. Now we're going to switch this. We did, we were going from the name to the formula. Now we're going to go from, when we're going from the formula to the name. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Right now we're going to, we've got the name. We want to know what the formula is. I'd like to go through these quickly, guys. Katie. Yes. Katie, I want you to do number not six. So CO2. Six. Katie, I, I have all the confidence in you. CO2 is too easy. Okay. So sulfur would be S. What's Tetra? Uh, number six. Oh, number six. Jesus. Okay, hexa is, so sulfur six. S6. S6, sorry. No, no, oh, that's nine. So bromide, bromine nine. S6, BR9. Oh, BR9, sorry. That's yes. fine. I kind of knew what you meant. Good. All right. Um, how Did I get one? Uh, go ahead, Terry. Go for it. Do the first uh, one, Terry. One? First one. Carbon dioxide. Uh, yeah. CO2. Carbon. There's only one of them. There's no prefix, so you know there's only one of them. Die. Right. There are two of them. The root is ox. It's oxygen. CO2. We good, guys? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Neela. 
Yeah, I'm here. Good, Neela. Let's go with sulfur tetrafluoride. Okay, sulfur is S, and there's only one, so then it would be SFL tetra is seven. So yep. tetra is four. Oh, what was I thinking? Oh, hepta, hexa. Um, so it would be SFL subscript four. Almost. And it's just something you gotta, you're going to have to learn. Fluorine's symbol is just F. Okay? Oh, okay. SF4. Okay. Who wants a tough one? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Anyway. Nah, I haven't even having too much fun already. I'll try one. Who, who's Curtis? Yeah, I'll try it. Dihydrogen monoxide. Uh, so that's H2. <coughs> um, B9. Monoxide. H2. Wait, where are we at? Oh, okay. Number five. Yeah, H, I said H2, dihydrogen monoxide. H2. H2O. Yeah. Yeah, water. That's yep. what water is supposed to be called. Dihydrogen monoxide. That's funny. If you go to a restaurant, yo, excuse me, can I get a dihydrogen monoxide, please? You can drown. You can drown from that stuff. Wait, that's crazy. Wait, what? That's I like hydrogen I monoxide. Know. Think about it. H two O. Two is the is the subscript for hydrogen. Needs so a my, perfect my question is, why do they even have an empirical or a um, like? Why do they have two systems? Why don't they just stick to one? Isn't it just kind of confusing? Because some things are have been used so often that they supersede the system. But wouldn't it just like be better to just set the norm for just one thing? Because like Hunter, do you remember that very, very nice man who was a president called Jimmy Carter? Sure. Jimmy Carter tried to drag the tried to drag the United States kicking and screaming into the metric age. You can see how far that got us. Yeah. American people don't want to change. Well, so man. it's just so it's been used so often that. We accept it as being water rather than dihydrogen monoxide. Yeah. Okay, last thing. Last thing we got to get through. And believe me, guys, we are going to continue to practice this. We have to learn to name acids. You got to remember, acids always, 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 always begin with hydrogen. Always begin with hydrogen, no matter what. Huh. It only depends upon what the anion is, the difference in the acid. The cation will always be H plus. And we have two different kinds of acids. One is a binary acid. The other is an oxy acid. Riddle me this, campers. What? element do you think oxy acids have? Oxygen. So if you see oxygen in the formula, you use oxy acid rules. What if you don't powerful? see Hunter? Yeah. What, what did you ask? What are more powerful, the hydroxy acids or the binary? Hydroxy. Hydroxy, I'm sorry, the, not hydroxy, oxy acids are more, more powerful. There's a reason for that, but you won't get to it until you study acids and bases in chem two. So if there are two different types, one are binary, do not have oxygen. The other are oxy acids, contain oxygen. So when we are naming binary acids, all they are are H with a non-metal. So if you look at your periodic table, not so much nitrogen. Nitrogen, NH3 is ammonia, it's a base. So don't worry about nitrogen. Oxygen is water, it's neutral. So all we gotta worry about is HF, H2S, HCl, H2SE, HBr, and HI. 
There's literally about six of them that exist. So all it is is hydrogen and a monoatomic anion. The way you name it. First part is called hydro. Second part, you use the root, sim root syllable of the element. Third part, you add IC, then you add the word acid. HCl, only one, there's, all, it's not a polyatomic, doesn't contain oxygen. I'm gonna use binary rules. Binary rules, hydro starts it. First syllable of the other element, chlor. Add IC, hydrochloric, end it with acid. H2S, only one element composed the anion, hydro, sulfic acid. But that doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? So in actuality, this one is hydrosulfuric acid. You just have to add that one little symbol there. H-I, Terry. What do these start with? Uh, hydro. Hydro. What's the Hi. what's the element? I. I. So hydro. Ionic. Hydro ionic acid. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Curtis H F. Uh, hydro. <laughs> Whoa. <sighs> Just fell out of my chair. R.I.P. I didn't realize Where's it was that, that exciting. Wow. Okay. So it's hydro. I'm looking at my periodic table here. One second. It's HF. Yeah. He's got it. He's got it. He's looking up. He's just looking up to the element right now. Yeah. Yeah. Element F. Hydrofluoric -flu acid. Hydrofluoric acid. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Spencer, you out, does Spencer say he wasn't available? I haven't, I haven't bothered oh, me yet. Oh. Spencer, you out there? Good. Hey, I'm here. Okay, I want the formula for hydrobromic acid. Is it H and then BR? HBR, okay. Brome is the middle, is the first syllable for bromine, so, First symbol is going to always be H, B, R. Mila. Yes. Okay. Give it a shot. Hydrophosphoric acid. Um, I want the formula. Yeah. What's the first element always going to be? H. Okay. Phosphoric. <laughs> Um, 3P. H3, perfect. Absolutely perfect. That was, that really was a hard one because I wasn't expecting you to get the three. H3P, <laughs> dynamite. Okay, now, those, that's it. Literally speaking, guys. Hydrofluoric, hydrochloric, hydrosulfuric, hydroselenic, hydrobromic, hydroiotic. That's all there are. That's it, okay? Now, the other acids that, that there are are called oxy acids. These are acids with an ion, an anion having oxygen in it. They're polyatomic atoms. You got to memorize this, this mnemonic. I ate it and it was icky. Your kids ought to like this, Mila. I ate it and it was icky. I got one kid sleeping and the other one's eating ice cream on the couch, so. There you go. <laughs> go buy couch. I know. <laughs> 
So if the polyatomic ends in ATE, you name it by taking the AT off and adding IC. You may have to add a symbol. Again, I ate it, it was icky. If the polyatomic ion ends in ATE, the acid will end in IC. So we have H2SO4. SO4, you look up the polyatomic, it's sulfate. You drop the ATE and add IC, but it's sulfic acid just doesn't flow off the tongues. So we add another symbol to make it sulfuric acid. HNO3, if you look up NO3 in the chart, NO3 is nitrate. I ate it, it was icky. Nitrate turns into nitric acid. Be careful, you do not use hydro with these. HNO3 is not hydro nitric acid. It is just simply nitric acid. The other Professor, thing could you, you need... go over the last one, please? I am lost why HNO3 is not called hydronitric acid. Because it has an oxygen in it, Rosina. Oh, God. It only is named, it only has a hydro in it if it's a binary acid. We're dealing with oxy acids now, so they just have the root IC acid. Okay? The other mnemonic. I took a bite and it was delicious. If the polyatomic ends in ITE, the acid will end in OUS. So, uh, I don't like this one. We're gonna go with this one first. NO2, nitrate. I took a bite and it was delicious. I take the ITE away, put in OUS, this becomes nitrous acid. And I'm a little bit beyond guys. So I'm gonna bring this back up again when we start up again on Tuesday. Questions guys. No. So professor, I just wanna go ahead and just recap. <clears throat> Go ahead. So, so you were you were you were basically saying, um, uh, I lost it. So, what you if there's no um, so for mono means one. I'm just trying to recap on that. So when it's mono, okay. you don't actually put this. Mono means one when you're dealing with covalent compounds. Okay, so that's you. You you can't just say mono means one, Gabe. Okay? You have to say which rule system you're using. Mono means one when we are dealing with the covalent system. Okay? Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Now come back. Give me the rest of what you were saying. I'm just trying to like, I'm trying to um, just kind of grasp, because I think at the beginning, my audio is actually cutting off a lot. So I couldn't hear you were cutting off a lot. So I just want to make, uh, understand. So when it is mono, like you don't actually put the number one, you just kind of let it, it's okay. probably confusing. Uh, 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 Gaith, are you, tell, first of all, are you going from the name to the formula at this point? Yes, yeah. All right. First of all, if it's mono, we're only talking about the second element because remember, if there's only one of the first element, you don't use mono, okay? Oh, okay. If it's the second element and it's mono, just write the symbol there. The one is gonna be understood. Gotcha, okay, that makes sense. Um, is it okay if we log out? I gotta get stuff done before the lab. And then my other- Go ahead, Kate. Yes, Mila, yes. Okay. I'll see you in a little, little bit. See you in a little bit. Go ahead, Kate. And my other question was, I, when I was, I logged into a six, 
I mean, at 537, and I saw you were writing questions, like question one and two. What were these questions about? They're the same questions that, they're the same questions that I had on the, um, they're the same questions that I had on the beginning. Okay, remember I told you that the first thing you ask is a metal present, okay? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Metal present, you're using uh, ionic rules, no metal covalent rules. Okay, that's all I was doing. I was just trying to make things a little more succinct. Okay, that's all I was doing, Gaith. Okay, and my final was with well, the labs, you know how like there's for question one, there's never really a question. So now going back, where do we get all these extra questions from? You know how like in the lab, you start off with no question or not, is it the lab or the homework? No, it's the, it's the lab. How you start off with, it says the first qu number one has no question. So extra oh, credit or something. number one is there specifically if I want to give you extra credit, okay? Oh, okay. So we never had, we haven't had any of these, right? I just want to make no, sure. No, you I'm haven't like, had any of them. Oh, okay. Okay. I was just going to make sure. Because and I'll I know be honest, I Gaith, I'll be honest with you. Because the, you're, we're running these as dry labs, you guys have a, an extreme advantage. Okay. You've been, you've been given the data. So that kind of makes up for any extra credit. And I generally give extra credit for how well you perform in the actual experiment. Okay, guys. Oh, okay. That yeah, makes sense. All right. Let me. I want to see something because I want to. Where is the schedule? Yeah, so did you already take attendance? Mm, no, I didn't. But I, I will kind of do that. I kind of got to everybody today. Okay. So are we good to leave? You're good to leave. Yeah. Okay, you have a have a good week. You have a good week. See you later. Bye. See you later. Oh, it's in the syllabus. Sorry, I See keep on forgetting. Yeah, goodbye. I'm just trying to look to see when we have nomenclature. All right, Professor. Bye. So you said we can we can access your lab, right? Remember last time you said in the lab, lab the nomenclature uh, pre lab is the twenty second. Or no, yes, it's the fifteenth. I see it. I, I've got it up there. And my test two is after that. So that's a good thing. Okay. okay? So you're going to, uh, Hunter, you're going to get more practice. All that right. whole lab, that whole lab is a dry what, lab. And we literally. What is the test two? What's that? What is the date for test two? The date for test two is, it says March 8th, but I, think I screwed. Uh, Hunter. That's screwed. That's screwed. It may be March 3rd. I may have to move it back to March 3rd. Okay. Because March 8th. The Ides of March. Oh, am I looking at the wrong one? I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, sorry. I was looking at the schedule. My bad. I was looking at the schedule and it says that the test was March 8th. It is not March 8th. Test two is on March 2nd. Okay. And we will have had, we will have had the nomenclature lab in the meantime, which is a very good thing because it'll help. Okay. Um... I got to get off here, Hunter, because I got to start my class at 730. All right. And is there anything vital that you need to talk about? No. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be rude, but Alec, you good? Yeah. I was just going to tell Hunter if he needed more practice, anything past page seven in the survival guide is literally pure practice. Yeah. And everything from page okay. like seven to 22 is practice. Alec, do you have any idea how many questions you have? for that lab report for wait for the, for, nomenclature, for the nomenclature lab report you are going to literally have 
about 200 questions. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I guess this would definitely be it's helpful. Going be it's going to be because there's like exactly like 200 questions in here. Yeah, it's I, I, it's throwing this stuff at you. Yes, I realize that it's hard. I realize it's very hard. But by the time you get to the end, by the time you do all of the survivor guide questions, by the time you do all the lab from the nomenclature, you'll be you will you will definitely have had enough practice. Yeah, okay. I think so. I'm sorry, Alec. I, I, I gotta do the same thing I did to Hunter. Nope, we're I, all good. I, I've got everything out now. So all right, yeah, Omar, I gotta gotta let you go now, okay, Omar. I don't even think he's here. So I don't think he's here either. So I'll see you later, Alec.